help you write your method section uh, for the manuscript we're doing based on the survey you guys took online. So the method section for this particular part of the manuscript is really easy to write. It should take you no more than 10 minutes to write this section. And so I've put on Blackboard this document just basically describing very briefly what the method section entails. You've got a participant subsection, a material subsection, and a procedure subsection. Those are all in italics. So we're going to start simply by centering the word method. Oh, can't do that. Take caps, caps lock off. I want the capital M like that. Make sure that's centered. Right. And then left justify everything else. And make sure you put it in a readable font. I was getting strange fonts on some of the papers, which were very difficult to read. So it should be 12 point standard font like Times New Roman, I guess Calibri, Ariel, something that's legible. 12 point font, one inch margins, which is generally the standard that's set up. And uh, double space everything. Double space is important because if I want to write comments, I'm going to write them in between the lines uh, in your uploads when you upload your documents as PDF files. So we have method in the center 12 point font times new Roman I like to use participants and we want that in italics so like I said very very easy first section so just the subheadings in italics left justified now you can start talking about what the participant who the participants were in the study one or two sentences describing the total number of participants, males, females, non-binary, and where they were recruited from. Well, for this, we have 15 total participants. I'm just going to list it all out here. You're going to write out this in full sentences. So you're going to write full sentences. I'm just going to kind of uh, abbreviate it here just to get through this. And there were 10 female, 5 male. Uh, ethnicity, so you're going to write you know, one sentence like that. Ethnicity, uh, in the next sentence you can write about ethnicity if you want. I'm giving you that information, so it's probably a good idea to include it. Uh, there were three African American, I spell poorly, so I might have some typos here. Go back and correct. Uh, 10 Hispanic. Now that's not a reason for you to spell poorly and check your work before you hand it in. 10 Hispanic Latino and 2 White. So out of those 15 participants, 10 were female, 5 were male, 3 were African American, 10 Hispanic Latino, 2 White. And the participants, I'll just put age range. You're going to write these as full sentences. So don't write what I'm writing because I'm just type, typing out the, the details you'll need to write this section. You're going to write in full complete sentences. Age range from 19 to 34. So you have two to three sentences right there. That's fine. And where were they recruited from? A research and psychology class. At Borough of Manhattan Community College. So I'd like to write that all out. I put BC, BMCC in parentheses because if I'm writing a manuscript and I write BMCC, people are going to be like, what's that? Uh, <laughs> they won't know what BMCC is. There's also a couple of different colleges that are BMCC. So if you like Google BMCC, you get like some other colleges. Uh, I think there's Baltimore, or Maryland, Maryland County, maybe, as BMCC too. So you want to write out Borough of Manhattan Community College. You could write City University of New York as well if you want. 
but if you write Borough of Manhattan Community College or BFCC in parentheses, people know where that is. They know it's not Baltimore, Maryland County Community College or whatever that thing is called. Okay, so those are participants. Write those in complete sentences, not what I wrote. I'm just giving you the details, write them in complete sentences. Uh, you don't have to write in paragraph form, you just left justify. So start on the left here and just write out several sentences. Then leave a space and put materials, and that should be parentheses. Oh, not parentheses, italics, I'm sorry. Start on the next line underneath it. What did we use in this study? A survey measuring, and I'll list some of the variables, empathy, attachment, style, what else do we measure? Uh, alexithymia, we measure depression, somatization, and COVID health related behaviors. Spelled COVID wrong, don't do that. And basically it was completed. So you just wanna list the variables there and those are most of the variables you know, empathy, attachment style, alexithymia, depression, somatization, and COVID health related behaviors, which include things like mask wearing, vaccination, uh, fear of pandemics, things like that, things related to COVID. You don't have to list everything related to COVID, so I'm calling it COVID health related behavior, that's fine. That's the survey part that's kind of at the end of the survey that asks a bunch of questions about COVID, which is what I'm interested in. You know, why are certain people getting vaccinated? Why are other people not? Why are people wearing masks? Why are people not? I mean, I know it's people are tired of it. Uh, I still do wear a mask in certain places. And people asked me the other day, someone asked me, uh, why are you wearing a mask? And I said, well, because I'm immunocompromised and I'm in an enclosed space. So the mask is beneficial to me because I can't afford to get COVID again. I already had it twice, don't want to get it again. And that's normal. I mean, that's you know, okay. If you don't need to wear the mask, if, you're, if your immune system is working well and you can just deal with COVID and be sick and be over it, fine. I mean, that's, that's okay too. Uh, so, but the question is like why certain people at the beginning I know we've moved into it a little bit more. We're in year three, God knows how many years, year four maybe. But like, why are people, you know, getting vaccinated? Why are people doing these things? And why do people not do those things? So still looking at thing, uh, at factors like empathy. You know, if you're high in empathy, are you more likely to get the vaccine or more likely to want other people you know to get the vaccine? protect people that could get sick, even though not everyone's high risk, you know, how about the high risk population? So that's that would be great if we could assess like a high risk population, but the problem is I don't have access to that population. If we had access to say a nursing home or a hospital or people that were high risk of getting serious consequences from COVID, that would be better than just a basic survey to undergraduates who tend to be relatively young and healthy uh, but we don't have access to that and so we need to gather some basic data first and this is part of the basic data gathering so that's the whole purpose of the survey you know everyone's sick of covid i'm sick of covid of course but covid is very important because as i said in previous videos if the next pandemic comes along and you know, let's say COVID had a less than 1% mortality rate. What if the next pandemic has a 10% mortality rate? Now, wearing a mask and distancing and getting vaccinated and doing everything you can 
to avoid it, it's going to be a bigger deal, right? Like, what if COVID turns the the next pandemic is not COVID, but it's more like smallpox? You know, if we had like a reoccurrence of smallpox and no good way to vaccinate people, uh, we'd be in trouble. Smallpox is, was a serious illness, still is. I mean, it's there hasn't been a case in decades, uh, but. You know, as you saw, like over the summer, there was a case of polio. And polio, we don't even think about even vaccinating for polio anymore because we haven't seen polio in many, many years. And polio led to paralysis of some individuals. There was a case of polio in New York State. And so, what if we get hit with a pandemic that's like smallpox, that's like polio? Uh, we have to do better than what we did. So that's kind of the motivation here with COVID, even though I was tired of COVID, I understand. Procedure. And this will only take you 10 minutes because you're not gonna be like on a soapbox like I am talking about it. You're gonna be writing three small things here on the method page. You're gonna save it as a PDF and you're gonna upload it to Blackboard and I'm gonna grade it and this should be a 10 out of 10 situation. This should be really no errors here so the procedure was an online survey was completed uh, was completed that took approximately spell out approximately 30 minutes and that's basically all you have to write I mean, there's really not a procedure here because it was just taking a survey. If we had a an experiment, you would have to describe in great detail what were the conditions, uh, how did you assign subjects to conditions, how did you run the study. That would be very detailed. But with an online survey, it was basically here, take the survey. There's really no procedure other than taking the survey. This is very simple to describe the procedure here. If you want to write it was given for students earn class credit in research methods course, you could write that too. You don't need that, but you could write that if you wanted to. But it's just an online survey is completed that took approximately 30 minutes. That's it. So there's your method section. There's not much to write here. You should be getting 10 out of 10. This should be like the no-brainer part of the paper. The introduction is hard to write. Uh, I hope you looked at the feedback I gave you because there's a lot of feedback on that. It's a difficult task to write the introduction, especially if you haven't done it before. So I tried to simplify it, but it's still difficult. This is a no-brainer. This is as easy as you can get. Ten minutes. Save as a PDF, upload to Blackboard in the link, and I will put the link. So under, under assignments, you'll see this uh, guide, although the video guide's here too under the assignments tab and then I will put a link here for you to upload the um, like you had for the introduction you have another link for the method and I'll grade them get you feedback but really shouldn't be a problem if you just do what I basically told you so that's it for writing the method section bye for now and I'll see you soon online